Battlefield 1 is currently one of the most popular AAA titles out there, and personally it's one of the best first person shooters I've ever played. However, this game is very CPU intensive, and this means that more often than not, the CPU will actually be bottlenecking the GPU and holding back its performance. So, what does it take to play without any hiccups? Do we need a hyper-threaded quad-core processor such as Intel's i7-7700K? Or, can we get away with an overclocked i5, such as the 7600K? What about AMD's new Ryzen R7 chip, the 1700? Where do we predict that to fit in? Well, I tested both campaign and multiplayer across all graphical settings. That's low, medium, high and ultra settings at 1080p, to get an idea of how CPU usage scales across different FPS ranges. Quick note here, the test system that we are using has a Z170 motherboard, GTX 1070 Founders Edition and 16 gigs of 2600 MHz RAM. So keep in mind, when looking at the results, this is what we are using. So, jumping right in then, we tested both the unlocked i5 and i7 chips at both stock frequencies and with a 4.8 GHz overclock in campaign through almost identical runs in the break of dawn level. The results here between the two are really quite close until we start targeting those high refresh rates. For example, at ultra settings there's not much of a difference to be seen and the i5 and i7 play almost identically. Once the 7600K is overclocked, it can pretty much match the 7700K. Our frame time graph show that the i5's frame time, here in blue, is a little noisier than the i7 in red, but it's nothing you'll really notice when you're in-game actually playing. Dropping down to high settings and the i7 is starting to gain some lead, especially in its bottom 1% of frame rate results, which are about 25 FPS ahead of the i5. Again, overclock the i5 and you'll start to match the i7's average frame rate, but the lack of hyper-threading will keep those 1% low results a bit behind. This means that you may experience a bit of stuttering here and there. We see the same trend moving forward. The average FPS are quite close, and overclocking the i5 really does give it a nice boost, but it's just not enough to truly match the i7. I'd say the results here are pretty significant. If you're targeting high refresh rate gaming around 144Hz or above for Battlefield 1, you'll have a smoother experience on an i7 than you would on an i5. Overclocking will definitely help close the gap, but the gap is still there. Breaking down our frame time graphs, you can see just how much smoother the experience is with the i7. Here, we're looking at high settings with the i7 in red and the i5 in blue. The i5 truly does have a lot more variance in this FPS range. For multiplayer testing, I chose the most popular game mode among the server lists, and that was Conquest. We restricted the testing to Argon Forest, which some would argue is one of the more demanding maps on Battlefield 1. Now, keep in mind that the difference of about 3 to 4 FPS here is not considered significant, and I'd consider this margin of error, since testing online multiplayer is pretty inconsistent and problematic as you can imagine. I tried my best to give an apples to apples comparison here, using the same weapon class, playing across the entire map, and only joining full servers. As a whole, the multiplayer results are about 5-10% lower compared to our campaign results, and this showed in both the average frame rate and the 1% lowest frame rates. At ultra settings, we get a similar story as before. Both CPUs can manage 100 FPS quite smoothly, but there is a tighter bound between the i7's slower frame times and its faster ones, delivering a more consistent experience. At high settings, we see the same gap of about 10 FPS between the i5 and i7's bottom 1%, but the averages are pretty much identical. Once again, when we start targeting those higher refresh rates, the i7 pulls ahead at 156 FPS. The stock 7600K is really struggling here, but the jump from 4.2 GHz up to 4.8 GHz shows a noticeable bump in frame rate. With the i5, the GTX 1070 was only being utilized about 75-80% to in these FPS ranges, whereas with the i7, the GTX 1070 was consistently at 100%, even when we dropped the settings down to low and were pushing close to the game's maximum frame rate of 200 FPS. So, summing up. Frame rates up to about 120 FPS played very closely on the i5 7600K and the i7 7700K. The average frame rates were neck and neck, but the i7 had the advantage in the 1% low ranges by about 20 to 25 FPS, yielding a smoother experience the higher the frame rate. Overclocking the 7600K to 4.8 GHz helped close the gap in the average FPS, but the improvement on 1% lows was minimal, and this was most likely due to it having half the threads of the i7. Up to and beyond 144 FPS, you're definitely going to want an i7. As judging by the frame time graphs, the i5 had a lot more variance in FPS values and was sitting at 100% the entire time. AMD's new chip, the Ryzen R7 1700, retails slightly less than the 7700K. As of this video, it's not out yet. However, judging by its performance against Intel's i7 6800K, I do estimate that its performance in Battlefield 1 will be between the i5 7600K and the i7 7700K which we've compared today. So, if you can't decide between the i5 and i7, then the Ryzen R7 1700 should also be a good choice. That's all from me, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like the video if it helped you out. I've got more videos coming next week, one where I delete my i7 7700K, 
one where I compare a few different thermal interface materials for delitting. I've got another couple product reviews too, and also a full PC build. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss those. Once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.